let's talk about resolving inner conflicts because a lot of the suffering that we come to in life is not necessarily from things that just happen there and then or, or things that people do to us in the moment, although some suffering certainly does come from that but you know later on when we're on our own and our minds going back and forth between the different positions we could or should be taking on an issue that we're facing or have faced in the past or fear we might face in the future so a very common one might be oh, I feel really angry and then I have another part that says now come on you shouldn't get angry um, or do you even have the right to be angry about that? I mean, it's your fault. You put yourself in the situation and there, bang, you've got an inner conflict. Or how about um, a, another very common one? I really want to do something, but I don't feel like it. And now a whole, more than two parts can get involved in this conflict where you, you at least feel like you're more than one. You feel like you're two or three or four. There's the part that really wants to do it. There's the part that doesn't be feel can't be bothered and then there's another part that gives you shit for not being bothered and then you might have another part in that tries to comfort you and say well come on now you shouldn't be so hard on yourself you've had a, a really hard week uh, or you know maybe you're with your partner say and a conflict arises and you try and talk it out but you can't get them to do what you want and then you notice uh, yourself wanting to display behaviours that you might not be proud of. You, so sometimes for some people this goes co below the conscious radar and they just go straight into these behaviours like they might want to guilt or shame or, or get angry and intimidate another person into doing something but then uh, some of us will notice the desire to do that but at the same time uh, we'll, we'll have a part of ourselves that says you, know, you shouldn't do that and you might feel guilty um, if you do uh, on reflection so that's a introduction how do we resolve inner conflicts now that would be a very useful skill to have because you're likely to face inner conflicts quite a lot and in order to answer the question I'd like to use a metaphor a little bit of a strange metaphor for a kind of libertarian minded person to use but let's suppose that you were a king or a queen depending on your gender identity um, and you had a council of advisors and you came in to the meeting of your council of advisors and um, they had a disagreement about how the kingdom should be run but one in particular was furious and angry and um, they were standing up and disrupting the meeting would you tell them not to be angry or would you approach the situation so as to say right wait a second right let's back up here and slow down what is going on here right what are you so angry about try and get them to disengage from the conflict and hear out what this angry part has to say what it has to say in full and where it's coming from because if you could get that advisor the angry advisor the most loud the most vocal the most toys out the pram advisor on your council of advisor to feel understood is there not the most chance that that angry um, courtier would sit sit down once they felt understood and maybe a more productive conversation could happen um, in your in your meeting so here's the thing our personalities adapted to many different kinds of situations and we've got many different programs running that we learn that uh, in our childhood or even in adult life uh, sometimes we've cultivated new parts for example I didn't see very good communication in my house growing up so I went out and learned communication skills and things like that so I've got a part that knows them and wants to run the new program but that's going to be in competition with old programs that learn to adapt when 
uh, I didn't have so much knowledge or no one modeled those skills to me and they might be a lot more emotional than than the part that I've learned that's learned to communicate better so an important thing to do is back up slow down stop trying to get out the situation or have the situation finished as soon as possible especially if you're in a situation where there's another person there uh, a tremendous block to resolving conflicts with another person is trying to want to get the conflict over and done with as quickly as possible that causes you to rush and to rush your words if you can back up and go like what's going on here well on one hand I want this and the other hand I want that and there's some really great things that you can do depending on how comfortable you feel like for example uh, one that I love to do with clients is to get a chair and put it in front of them and say well look here's your mom or, or your ex or that person that spoke to you uh, funny why don't you just let your anger speak just let's get it all out let's hear it because see if you just put everything out on the table then you can look at what's on the table and decide how to order it and what to do with these things right if it's just up here rattling up in your mind you get lots of weird things happening that stand in the way for example um, things come up again and again your mind keeps on reminding you of things you've thought before because it's a afraid you might forget something important I better not forget this better not forget this that gets in the way of digging deeper and if you have repetitive thoughts a great thing to do is grab a pen and paper and write it down and it's like tidying up your filing cabinet right I put it away in a box and I can put it to the side I know what's in that cabinet those files in are, are in order and if you need to review it you might sometimes need to write about something two or three times so there's chair work where you just let the let's say the angry part speak and just give it free reign if you feel like you're not too self-conscious to sit in a room speaking at a chair this could be really really helpful for you or you could get a friend over and take turns afterwards see what is alive in you see how you're feeling check in or express to someone what was that like and um, if you don't have anyone else there you can write what it was like um, and think uh, have you reached any conclusions was there something underneath the anger something a little bit more vulnerable that wanted to be heard but as expressed in anger then you can move on if, if something else isn't present in you check it out check it out with yourself see what's going on maybe um, the part of you that um, thinks that you shouldn't be angry needs a proper hearing as well because the thing is when you just think about it the debate doesn't get very far it's like uh, oh I feel really angry oh I shouldn't feel angry oh I feel really angry I shouldn't you know but it doesn't go any deeper than that so isolating the individual impulses and giving them their own say uh, is really helpful another thing you can do is write a play basically you know sit down and imagine these were two characters or more than two characters having a debate and write out the entire debate so, and, and just see where that it goes make it fun make it interesting explore yourself speak from each of those parts and see 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 what that's like see what that's like to do okay so I think I'm gonna wrap of course uh, one way that is really helpful to resolve inner conflicts is to speak to a professional uh, such as myself who's got some experience in helping facilitate people through the process of resolving inner conflicts and uh, if you think that I might be a good person to do that with you can message me here on Facebook or you can find me at beyourselfandloveit.com thanks and I, I hope you got some value out of this video let me know if you want me to do more and the kind of topics you'd like to hear my views on. Thank you.